Hey, so one common question I normally get um, from people with shoulder pain is, do I really, do I really need rotator cuff surgery? So I'm going to answer that for you because there's a couple of different layers that when people ask me this question, um, this is uh, the process that I go through uh, with them so that I can help you make a decision about whether, you know, surgery is um, the option for you or therapy is the option for you. Because I think as a therapist, um, really it's just about empowering you, right? As a person going through the shoulder pain, I sort of wish that when I was going through some of, you know, my injuries that, you know, someone took the time to do this for me. So if you are suffering with shoulder pain or a rotator cuff injury, um, this video is going to be for you. My name is Huang. I'm an occupational therapist and certified hand therapist. So I specialize not just in hands, but I specialize in shoulders and um, so much more. So, but for, for this topic, shoulders. <laughs> um, so do you really need a rotator cuff surgery? So rotator cuff is essentially um, the tendon that's attached to the muscles that help to move your shoulder, right? So it's muscle, like, so you have, you have a muscle belly, and then you have tendons attached on each end. And the rotator cuff um, is just a tear of, there's four muscles, but they all kind of come together in your shoulder and help to hold this bone, the head of the humerus, into this little socket. So you really need all four muscles, all, all four tendons to work really well together in this, what we call a shoulder complex, um, so that you can live pain-free, you can be active, you can do things over your head, you can push, you can pull, you can sleep. Um, those are really important things, right? So do you really need rotator cuff surgery? The difference there comes in a couple of, um, I would say, essentially three things you want to think about. Age, activity level, and your ultimate commitment to the process, right? So after the age of 40, there is, I mean, there's tons of research on this to show that after the age of 40, we just have normal wear and tear of uh, the tendons, especially a very particular tendon called the supraspinatus because of the way it sits um there is your 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 scapula has this acromion it's like this little hook and the head of the humerus this bone right here a lot of times if it's not working well it just keeps hitting so bone and bone keep hitting and over time there's some wear and tear of it so you might have after the age of 40 a lot of people have small little tears so whether you need rotator cuff surgery or not depends on the severity of the tear so let's say you have a full tear, like you fell on it, you had an accident, it is just torn. Usually if you have a full tear, what happens with that tear is the muscle, right? The muscle pulls back to its original spot. Normally, if you have a full rotator cuff tear, I do recommend having surgery because tendons cannot heal on their own, right? You need to take that muscle take that tendon and pull it back and sew or hammer it back into place that's what the surgeons do right so if you have a full tear and you are relatively young relatively active um then you want to you know i recommend having a rotator cuff surgery because once that muscle pulls back and it sits there for a certain length of time your window of opportunity to have surgery to fix it goes away i once worked with a man who i met him at around 55. he tore his rotator cuff in both shoulders for whatever reason and he was told in his 40s like i guess it was like he was 45 let's say they told him you need rotator cuff surgery and he had a full tear so imagine the tear it's like a rubber band you cut on one end it's gonna come back to where it originally um is you know inserted um or originated so it 
you know, retracted back and they recommended surgery for him at that time. And I don't think that anyone really fully explained or maybe he just chose not to have surgery because he was scared. But he chose not to have surgery. And by the time he was 55, 10 years later, he was like, okay, I'm ready to have that surgery now. And now he's a no longer a candidate. By the time I saw him, um, he had pain in both shoulders. He was really limited in what he could do. I mean, he could move it, right? So he had decent motion to get dressed and do other stuff, but he couldn't be more physically active. And he was starting to have pain that just would not subside. So um, he didn't understand the concept of the muscle pulling back. And you cut it, you cut it, it's like a rubber band, it's going to pull back to its original, right? So this muscle starts over here, ends over here, and it's torn, it's going to come all the way back to its original. And then what happens with it over a period of time is when you're not using it, the body just starts to de uh, deposit fat there. And it no longer keeps its uh, ability to be um, uh, how do you call it? Elastic, right? Because your muscles only get long and only get short. So he lost that ability. So he was no longer a candidate. So if you have a full rotator cuff tear, you know, talk to your surgeon, talk to your therapist about what the surgery is like, the protocols, and we can go into that in another one. But majority of the time, people have what's called a partial tear, or you might have shoulder pain that's starting to cause a little tear, but you don't yet really fully have a tear. And so do, do you really need rotator cuff surgery? So if you don't have a full tear, then one of the first things um, to consider is what we call conservative treatment. Conservative treatment means, can I take care of this problem without um, having surgery? Can I take care of this problem without constantly having injections, right? And if you are, you know, age, again, if you, I mean, I'm in my 40s, and I plan to live a really long time, you know, God willing, and I want to feel healthy, I want to feel pain free, I want to be very active. So um, if you're in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, and even 70s, you, I mean, I'm, I had a patient who she was in her 80s um, and she was still playing golf, you know, and she was able to fix her shoulder pain um, and not need any surgery, right? And people kept telling her like, oh, you're in your 80s, you should slow down, like this is normal, you're aging. And she goes, yeah, but just the other day I was still in my 80s and I was still playing golf. So that didn't make sense to her. So she was like, I knew I, I needed to do something. She just, I just wasn't sure what it was I needed to do. So um, if, you know, age can be a component, whether you need surgery or not, but the first line of action essentially is to try conservative treatment. And that means therapy. There, The right kind of therapy is the thing that's going to make the difference, whether you can actually avoid surgery or not, right? The right kind of therapy, just not like any therapy. Um, your activity level. So usually determine someone's activity level. And um, I had some, uh, one of my patients was in his 60s, he was 65. Um, and he asked me this question, do I really need rotator cuff surgery? And um, based on the review of his MRI, based on his his hand, uh, arm movement and he really you don't even need the MRI but he wanted to have it because um he wanted to know for sure so of course what happens when you go and get an MRI you get an MRI the surgeon's going to say you need surgery right because that's what MRIs do they determine um your need for surgery so it's yep they're like, you have a tear. We don't know how big the tear is, but you have a tear, which you're always going to end up finding in someone who's over 40. Um, so they're like, yep, you need surgery. And he was like, I don't know if I, I mean, he even had his surgery scheduled. And then he came to me and he was like, do I really need this? And I said, if you haven't really tried 
conservative therapy, um, then it's something to consider. So he's very active. He works in his yard. He's active with his children. Um, overall, just a really active guy and he's 65. And ultimately, I was like, ultimately, what's your commitment to the process? You're right. Do you want to avoid it? So some people actually don't right? Some people don't. They would just rather have the surgery. Like I know tons of people are like, nope, if I need surgery, let me have the surgery, right? I have a partial tear. I have a small tear. Let me have the surgery. So there, they would rather have the surgery um, and then work with um, the recovery process, which is a minimum of three months to a year for recovery, right? Minimum of three months to a year for recovery. And we can talk about, that's another video, right? But if you're, if you already like, you don't really want to avoid it, you want to have surgery, this video isn't really for you, right? Um, but if you are committed, right, you have to be committed to avoiding the surgery. Um, it is possible as long as you have a partial tear, right? And it is possible um, based on the type of therapy that you have. Um, and then here are the two things that I look for when I'm working with someone. Um, so that I can know as I'm working with them, you can avoid surgery or at some point I'm like, no, you need surgery. Right. Um, so the thing to look for is one, you, you want to get rid of the pain. So the Getting rid of the pain is actually funny enough. It's the easiest thing, right? You can get rid of pain relatively fast uh, if you do the right kind of therapy, right? So if you're going somewhere and you're just getting a hot pack, e-stem, they're putting you on an arm bike, they're having you do pulleys, um, you know, things, and they're not really watching how you are moving, uh, the order in which you're exercising, you may not feel the results. And so that might make you think, oh, I, I need to go and have surgery. Done correctly, you're looking for two things. You're looking for week on week on week, a certain progress of reduced pain, right? So I usually tell my patients based on the way I work is um, within three to four weeks, we should, we should have a solid answer right? A solid answer if we can avoid it. I usually know if we're working together, if they're committed and I'm um, finding the movements that work, I test against the movements that work and you're actually doing the one or two things that I'm showing you. Um, I usually see it like around two weeks, around three weeks, and then, you know, we can progress from there. So one, it's, you know, we can get rid of the pain. That's relatively easy. Two, Two, the thing is, can we keep it? Can we keep it? So there's a certain progress that we're making in order to be able to keep it. Once you reduce the pain, then the, the strengthening is very, uh, very particular. And then you have to continue to progress. If you're doing the same three exercises and you're not progressing, that might, you might plateau and not, um, not be able to keep it. So every person and every body and their activity level is different. That's why it's so important for you if you're suffering with shoulder pain and you're considering rotator cuff surgery is, you know, closely working with your therapist, whether it be a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, a certified hand therapist, someone who specializes and works with shoulders. They're willing to spend the time to talk to you, to monitor how you're doing things, to give you the exercises in a particular order that's actually going to help you see progress. It's when you don't see any progress week on week on week and being able to keep it is when I would say, okay, we're not able to, we're able to get rid of the pain, but we're not able to keep it. So now you have to make the hard decision because having surgery that is not like from an accident is a personal choice right, is a personal choice. Some people have health concerns and health issues and they're just like, um, I don't want to have a surgery, right? So what are you willing to live with? Um, another thing that I do at my clinic where, you know, if, you know, you might be watching this and if you're in Miami, we can help you. If you're watching somewhere else, talk to your therapist, create a plan with them. And one of the things that I do is I look above and below, right? I look above and below. So shoulder 
problems isn't just shoulder problems. We are full living human beings and we use all of our body. There's not one part of our body that we're not using, okay? We're using it all. And the way you use your body impacts your recovery. So make sure you look above and below. Um, I remember working with a woman way back in my early days where I didn't know how to do this. Um, I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, it was very early on in my career. She had tried conservative therapy and um, she had an MRI and she had a very, very, very small tear. And the doctor didn't want to do the surgery, but after months and months of therapy, and she just could not get rid of the pain, um, he ultimately decided to go in and have the surgery. And she wanted to have the surgery, and she came to therapy, um, and um, we got her motion back. I mean, everything was good, except for she still had that nagging little pain. And I'll tell you what, if your therapist is not looking above and below, you might not be getting the results, right? So with the shoulder, one of the most important things that we could do as therapists is look above and below. So above and below, or actually the shoulder is, you know, the shoulder complex uh, comprises of the, um, of the clavicle as well, the shoulder blade, and then this humerus, right? But this whole complex then now sits on your thoracic spine. And we have 12 of those bones, right? So we got to look at how is your the bones of your thorax essentially moving, right? And then we have to look at your cervical spine. Your cervical spine encompasses seven of those bones. So you want to always to see seven, and we want to make sure we're looking and saying, are they moving well, right? And the muscles, like, you know, this is how I teach my students, um, but the muscles that encompass that help us to move our shoulder pain-free right? We have huge expansive muscles in the front um, and we have ex expansive muscles in the back and they all kind of come back to um, the spine, right? So your lower back, your mid back, your upper back and um, your cervical spine. So when you are working with your therapist, um, work with them, be honest with them, tell them <laughs> um, what is going on past, uh, injuries and, and little things, um, can make a difference. So usually when I work with my shoulder patients, I'm like, okay, tell me what's going on. Let me, I need the history of your back. I need, you know, history of your neck because all of these things make a really big difference in overall getting great results for your shoulder right? So if you're truly, you know, truly committed to the process of avoiding surgery, then do you really need rotator cuff surgery? I would give yourself, you know, I, this is what I tell, you know, my friends, my family, um, and my patients, give yourself the ultimate chance, right? Give yourself the ultimate chance of trying to avoid it. When you can confidently sit there and say, I have done my best and it has not helped and I'm young, I want to be active um, and I'm committed to the process and I committed to the process, then, then you can feel really confident about your decision to have surgery and not feel any regret, right? And not, and you know, it helps to um, reduce some of your fear and self-doubt about like, do I really need it? So that's why I say the majority of the patients we work with, um, majority of them were able to help avoid rotator cuff surgery. Majority of them were able to avoid, um, were able to avoid having injections, right? There's a small percentage of people who need rotator cuff surgery. There are the ones who fall. There's there are the ones who've had like chronic issues over a period of time that they didn't deal with for a really long time, and their joint might be really messy inside. Um, but they, like I said, one of my other patients, he just waited, waited ten years, and then he would just you know, kind of not a candidate for rotator cuff surgery. So I would encourage you. If you are suffering from shoulder pain and you think 
it is a rotator cuff injury. Um, you can come and talk to, go talk to your, your therapist that you trust. If you are in the local Miami area, my name is Huang Tran. I have a therapy clinic in Doral. It's called Hands-On Therapy Services. I'll include the links below so that you can go check it out. We have some free guides that talk about, you know, what are some of the things that you can do? What are some of the things that you should avoid? Um, and I invite you to come and talk to our specialists and see, are you a candidate for our type of therapy services? And can you really fully um, avoid rotator cuff surgery? We've been able to help um, hundreds of people avoid it. So all it does is it starts with a conversation. All right. So let me know if this video has helped you and, um, and share with a friend who's going through shoulder pain. See if you can help them avoid surgery as well. Thanks for tuning in and like the button, subscribe for more. I'm going to put out some more videos about shoulder pain and I think other shoulder conditions. All right. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Bye.